In the previous couple of lectures, we looked at a current controlled voltage source using an op amp and by driving it with a voltage source in series with a resistor, we got a voltage in voltage out circuit and this gave us another basic op amp circuit which is known as the inverting amplifier. Okay. So, the non inverting amplifier which is the voltage controlled voltage source and the inverting amplifier which is the current controlled voltage source, but driven by a voltage source in series with a the resistance. These are the two basic types of amplifiers you will see in any uh, textbooks. In both these cases, the gain depends on a ratio of resistors and if the loop gain is large, then the influence of loop gain is very small. Okay. So, it may sound a little weird initially, but if you do the calculations, it is pretty obvious, right? because in the denominator you get 1 plus the reciprocal of loop gain. So, the loop gain is very large, that reciprocal is negligible and you will get a gain that is accurately defined only by resistor ratios. Okay. So, then we looked at uh, some more details of the op amp. At the block diagram, those things are fine, but clearly something has to be supplying the output of the op amp. Okay, and what is that? That is the power supply connected to the op amp. So, the op amp is op amp has two supply terminals as we like most other circuits. So, now I think you already know this the definition of ground is somewhat arbitrary in a circuit. Okay. So, there are many uh, at least if you just look at a, I mean at a circuits at the level of uh, basic electrical circuits, you can choose any node to be ground. Okay. So, which one you choose uh, to be ground in that case probably is only dependent on convenience for analysis. Okay. So, if you have a node in which how would you choose let us say your only purpose is analysis and I am give I give you a circuit I do not mark the ground which one would you choose to be ground what is that why yeah basically you have to write nodal equations and you have to add uh, fewer currents i mean so that way you can there is some uh, minor optimization there by trying to uh, choose the ground to be the one with most connections because for the ground node you don't write the equation right so that's what it is now in practice there are there may be other constraints okay so sometimes uh, first of all the term ground itself is used to refer to many different things and Sometimes you may have a common large metal chassis in a circuit, and whatever is connected to that, that may be ground. Okay, like for instance, in the body of an automobile, like uh, something will be connected to the entire body. That is the ground. Okay, so if you have something, some piece of metal object touching the body of the car, and then you have some voltages. So let's say inside, for whatever reason, something has to be connected to this piece of metal. That has to be ground. Okay, so there are uh, other constraints like that. So. Uh, now, the way we define the amplifiers, if you take the non inverting amplifier for instance, this input source is with respect to this ground. Okay. These are the supplies and this is also connected to this ground and if we have a load it is also typically shown to be connected to ground. Okay. Now, unlike in the I mean if I gave you a circuit with so, so let me show it like this I said uh, you will have two supplies with respect to ground, why do we need two supplies? Because the op amps output has to go both positive and negative. You know that the op amps output is limited between the supply rails. Okay, so it's limited to this voltage and that voltage, something between that. And if you want the output voltage to swing both positive and negative, you have to have a supply voltage that is positive with respect to ground and another one that is negative with respect to ground. Okay. So, if I simply connect up all these points, right, then you can uh, take any node in the circuit and you can call this, you can call it ground. Okay, That is perfectly fine if this is the circuit that is given to you. But usually what happens is that 
the ground is you don't have as much freedom in choosing the ground okay meaning this vi here it's not a voltage source with two terminals like that it's a representation of some circuit that is driving the signal okay so this ground so basically uh, that uh, circuit itself could be something like this it has some ground and it has some uh, uh, output voltage which is basically the input voltage to this circuit and that output voltage appears with respect to its ground okay so that means that you have to choose a common ground to all the parts of the circuit similarly this load rl is not a resistor with two free hanging terminals like the ones you used in the lab it's also a representation of what comes afterwards okay so rl could also be it's the input part of some circuit and that circuit has its own ground okay so what happens is this uh, common signal ground node you can't take a chain of circuits and then you can uh, you can't take a let's say a part of the chain of circuits and then change its ground potentials arbitrarily okay that's not possible so although in principle uh, you can take the entire circuit right and then call any uh, node as the ground you can't take a part of it and for instance this amplifier is supposed to be uh, part of let's say a chain of amplifiers or something you can't change the grounds only in this one okay so that's why uh, even if we change other things in the circuit typically we can't lift either the input voltage or the load off the ground okay so you understand what this means i mean essentially the input voltage will have to be with one terminal grounded this one you can connect anywhere and similarly the load will typically be with one terminal grounded and you can connect the other one somewhere okay so this constraint will come in later so what i want to bring in is this notion that the uh, not all grounds can be shifted arbitrarily i mean in uh, in from the circuit theory perspective they can be or if you take the entire circuit everything that is connected to it from the beginning to end uh, you can change the grounds in any way you want you can call anything the ground but typically we are dealing with some pieces of circuits so when we do that both the input and output uh, the input source and the load have to be usually represented by sources which have one terminal connected to ground and the load which also has one terminal connected to ground is this okay so this constraint will come in uh, uh, soon as i'll show you okay now initially let me not worry about that so now let me show the connections explicitly for the moment okay and typically this is what i call as ground okay then i don't have to uh, worry about anything so the input is connected to a uh, input source has one terminal grounded the load has one terminal grounded and the load voltage is simply the input voltage times k where k is related to the resistor ratio okay now in this scenario assuming that your output swings both positive and negative you do need two supply voltages and in the lab i think you already used a dual supply where you have both the upper and lower rails of the supply right and typically these two are also equal to each other they don't have to be but in general they are let's say let's say plus 12 volts and both of these are 12 volts so this point is at plus 12 volts with respect to ground and this is at minus 12 now this is what we saw in the previous lecture also and towards the end of the lecture we were trying to work out how we can avoid having two separate sources okay so again one particular motivation may be that let's say you are operating this with a battery but if you have a, some an arrangement like this you necessarily need two batteries right so one for the lower source and the other for the upper source okay so what were the ideas how did we do this i don't want to have two sources like this i want to have a single source so what is it that i need to do i have a single source and then 
voltage yeah so we could potentially do this okay so between these two we get some voltage between these two we get some voltage what would be the choice of this voltage what would be the value of that voltage i mean for this particular case huh 24 volts so if you do use 24 volts and if you use uh equal resistors you get 12 volts across each of them simply because it is a resistive divider. Okay. But what was the issue with this? So, any current that you draw from this node okay, so that will change the voltage of that. Okay. Is this fine? Or if you call this the ground, that is what we want to do, right? If you call this the ground, then what happens if you draw a current from this? So, normally if you do not draw any current, this is 12 volts, right? So, if I call draw a current delta i from this, what will be the voltage? Hmm? How much? What will be that voltage? Same? How much is it? I am measuring all voltages with respect to this ground, right? So, if I did not connect anything here, the voltage of this would be 12 volts with respect to ground. If I do draw, if I connect a circuit, it will draw current, right? So, let us say that is some delta i or something. So, how much? Uh, what will be that voltage? Will it be 12? Will it be more than 12, less than 12? How much will it be? Minus? Minus or not delta i? Why? Yeah, so you give me the right answer, right? <laughs> what is it? Minus delta i times R naught. How would you solve this? Huh? R naught by 2. Why? Yeah. So, how would you do this? If I have a current delta i that is basically modeled by a current source delta i, right. So, now how would you figure out what the voltage is? I mean, this is a linear circuit driven by two sources, okay. What is the voltage here with respect to ground because of this source? You can draw, do this separately, right? You do not have to do it together. This is the whole idea behind Thevenin's theorem, right? Thevenin's theorem the part that you are Thevenizing has to be linear, otherwise, it does not work. Linear meaning it has to have linear components and independent sources, okay? So, what is this voltage? What is the voltage at this point because of the 24 volt source? Huh? 12 volts and what is the voltage here because of this source? How would you do it? You set 24 volt source to 0 and what will you have as a result? A huh? parallel combination of two resistors R naught and R naught. So, what is that voltage? Minus delta i times R naught by 2. Okay. So, another way of thinking about it is if you have a load current delta i, you will have a voltage drop equal to delta i times the Thevenin resistance looking in that way okay? and that is why we get the Thevenin resistance. right? What is the Thevenin resistance? If you Thevenize what is inside there, what is the, how do you find the Thevenin resistance of a circuit? You set all the independent sources to 0 and then find the resistance looking in, that is the reason for finding it. Okay? Thevenin resistance is not because okay, the uh, basic electrical circuit prof wants to torture you and then with some more problems and so we have a new theorem that is not the idea. So, it is useful. Okay. So, you can represent a complicated source using the equivalent Thevenin resistance that is why you have this. So, you have some change in the voltage. So, this is not great and the only way to 
uh, minimize the changes by having a very small value of R naught. Okay, so that delta A times R naught by two is let's say much smaller than 12 volts, so it's approximately 12. We don't worry about it. What is the problem with that solution? Yeah, so you will be. So this obviously means that the current flowing in here is much more than the current being drawn by the circuit. Okay. Now this is most of the time not acceptable at all. Okay, I mean you know that today the emphasis is on battery life of everything, right? So just to power some circuit, you can't be burning like let's say 10 or 100 times that current in a voltage divider. Okay, so this solution is not acceptable. Okay. So what is it that we need to do, or what is it that we can do? So, the exactly what we will do depends on the context. In some cases, maybe there is not much that uh, we can do. Somehow, you have to absorb the current, and this also has this, uh, yeah, okay. So, that is one thing. Secondly, so we do not want to use a voltage divider, at least not like that right so so there are many sort of related problems here let's fix everything so originally this was the ground 0 volts this is uh, minus 12 and this is plus 12 okay now if we in fact have a single supply This is the voltage divider we use to let us say create the midpoint voltage okay. and typically when we have a single supply we call the bottom node this one as ground. Okay. So, if this is 0 volts what will be this voltage? I mean this is just a matter of ground shifting right this is easy what is that voltage? this is 12 volts and this is 24 volts actually absolutely nothing has changed right except that okay this r naught may have to be very small uh, depending on the amount of current you are drawing and so on okay now there are in fact a couple of problems here one is of course we saw that if we make this it will work if you choose r naught to be small enough that itself is a problem by choosing a very small r naught your we are burning power what are the other problems that you see I said something about sources and loads earlier. This is now the new ground, right? What is the other problem that you see? What did I say earlier about sources and grounds of uh, sources and loads of a circuit? What's that? Yeah, neither source nor so like I said, this ground. I mean, if we just look at the circuit in isolation, it can be any node in the circuit. Okay, but obviously this is not uh, such simple circuits are not we are not what we are looking for. So this will be connected to something else. Okay, uh, on both sides, the input may come from some other circuit and the output may go to yet another circuit. And this ground has to be common to everything. Okay, so that means that. You understand? I mean, if I had only this circuit, there is no problem at all. Earlier I called this ground, now I call this ground. That is fine, there is no problem. That is simply a matter of shifting the voltages, that does not change the potential difference between any two nodes. So, nothing has changed at all. Okay? But we also have this uh, uh, issue that we are not looking only at this circuit in isolation, we have something that comes before, something that comes afterwards, and this V A and R L are really not a voltage source with two terminals and a load with two terminals they are representations of what comes before and what comes afterwards okay so they also have to share the same common ground the ground is the same for 
the entire circuit. So, I cannot work with uh, an input source like this or a load like this. Okay. So, I have to necessarily work with an input source of that sort and a load of that sort. Okay. So, let us take uh, one thing at a time, let us say look at the input source. Okay. So, what I said was I cannot use it like this, my V i is like that. I still have to connect it to my op amp circuit over there. So, what do I have to do? You understand the question? I have a grounded input source V i, one terminal is connected to ground. Of course, I have to still apply input in exactly the same way to the circuit, nothing should change and I should obviously have the same output and so on. So, what is it that I need to do? Hmm? Connect it here. So, now remember our new ground is over here. Okay. So, what is this voltage? What is the voltage at the positive terminal of the op amp? 12 plus V i, right. So, earlier when we had this node as ground, it was V i. Now, we have shifted the ground. So, it is 12 volts plus V i. So, if I have to use a source like this and nothing should change in the circuit, what should happen? I should add 12 volts and then connect it there. Okay. Right. So, this will obviously work. Yeah, yeah, but we cannot connect V i to ground, right. Remember again, when we uh, define voltages between two nodes, like for instance, this node here, this has 12 volts with respect to this ground, whereas here I have connected a battery or a floating source. Floating source means all the terminals can be connected anywhere. This source is not like that, right. One of its terminals is ground already, so we cannot use it directly. Okay. So, is this fine? I mean it will work for sure, it will not change any voltages, but does, does this look like a reasonable solution? I mean we have started off by saying I do not want to use two voltage sources, now I did not have it on the right side, I have it on the left side, I mean this does not look uh, right at all. The question is, is there any way to mimic a voltage source? Hmm? Well, I mean you think of all the basic elements and what does the voltage source do? What does the 12 volt voltage source do? Huh? So, basically it maintains a voltage difference of 12 volts across it regardless of what is happening. right? So, now can you think of another element which at least approximately does the same which holds a given voltage across it? Capacitor. right? So, I can take a capacitor and let us say somehow or the other I charge it to 12 volts, maybe I connected it across this and then broke off the connections. So, then it will get charged to 12 volts. Are these two exactly the same? Hmm? If current is drawn, the capacitor voltage will go on changing. Okay. So, that is the problem. So, now what should be the capacitance value if the voltage has to never change? So, if I draw a current here, so let us say delta i for a interval, what is that? High, how high? I mean, if it has to be exactly equal to a voltage source, it has to be infinitely large. Okay. So, that means that it has, a, has infinite number of charges there, any amount of current you draw, it really does not change the infinity. Okay. So, a capacitance 
equal to infinity will be exactly like a voltage source. Of course, this is not something that is realizable. You can't make an infinitely large capacitor, but at least this gives you an idea that maybe a large capacitor will work under some circumstances. Okay. Is this fine? So the problem is the following. Actually, the rest of the circuit is now a distraction. What we want is we have VI, which is uh, reference to ground. That is, one of its terminals is connected to ground. We have only a single supply of let's say 24 volts, and we have to apply 12 plus VI to the circuit. How do we do this? That's the idea. Okay. Is this fine? Yeah, yeah, next it is coming. So, V i and I have a 24 volt source here and I need 12 plus V i. So, the this will for sure work. Okay. So, I am just showing you also the reasoning. I could put this circuit easily and then ask you to analyze it, but at least you need to know why we are doing what we are doing. Okay, so that's why we have this more elaborate description. So this will work, but not very useful because you don't have another battery there to stick in. So now our idea is that we charge a capacitor to 12 volts and then stick it in series with the voltage source. Okay, so what will be the voltage here at this end? It will be 12 plus V i and it will as long as you do not draw any current from that this does work actually right it will be 12 plus V i. Okay. So, now let us go like a uh, few more steps first of all we had to take a and if this capacitor was infinitely large then this will work because even if you draw current it will work because the any finite current drawn that does not change the voltage of the capacitor. But let us get back to like how under what circumstances the capacitor voltage will uh, I mean not change. Sorry, uh, yeah, when you draw a current. So, first we have to charge the capacitor to 12 volts, and the only source we have is a 24 volt source. Okay. So, first let us look at forget connecting the V i, connecting the input V i. Let us only look at I have a capacitor C, I want to charge it to 12 volts using a 24 volt source. What should I do? resistive divider okay so i have some so let's say i mean obviously for uh, to get 12 volts it has to be the same uh, resistor but i mean in general if you want some other uh, voltage you may have to have a uh, different values of resistors there right you can get any voltage between 0 to 24 like this isn't it for, by choosing the upper and lower resistors properly so then what do i do to charge it to 12 volts Huh? which one will you connect? So, if I connect a capacitor C here, what happens to this voltage? It will eventually reach 12 volts. Okay. You should also be by now able to figure out how long it takes to get there, but let us say I am not concerned with that. I am willing to wait, but if I wait long enough, this will surely reach 12 volts. Is that correct? How are you sure? Why? Exactly. I mean, this is related to the same first order steady state issue, right? So, if you are in a first order circuit in steady state, in DC steady state, there will be no current through the capacitor. So, obviously, at that point, this voltage will be 12 volt and that is what it will reach. It may take uh, an hour, it may take a microsecond, depending on the values of R A and the C, but it will reach there. Okay. So, let us say we do that, that is what we do. Okay. So, let me redraw these things. Okay. If V i happens to be 0, this will get charged to 12 volts. Okay. Now, so let us again imagine that somehow the input is initially 0. So, this will get charged to 12 volts and then I apply V i. Okay. What I want to know is what kind of V i can I apply and here what is it that I wanted? Huh? 12 plus V i. Okay. So, this is what I want to figure out. 
So, how would I go about doing this? How should I do this? Right, do you understand the question? How many sources are in the circuit? Two. What is the voltage at this node because of this source? You already know that. What is the voltage at this node because of V i? V i. Why? Why is it V i? How would you go about doing something like this? You have capacitors now. I mean, I did not tell you what kind of V i it is. How would you go about figuring this? Okay, yeah, please calculate. I mean, now we already know the effect of this. This is a DC source, right? We do not know what V i is. V i could be a DC, V i could be a sinusoid, who knows what it is. Okay? So, we have to figure it out. So, this we already know. So, you can set this 24 volts to 0 and find out the effect of, I mean, find out the voltage here at this node because of V i. Okay? I mean all the trivial problems that you solved in the two tutorials they are leading to this right. This is yet another first order circuit and you have to do Laplace transform analysis to find out. So, please do it and tell me what this voltage is in terms of V i of s and then we can figure out uh, for what kind of V i it works for what it does not work and so on. Okay? So, if we have only the source V i in the circuit, you have two resistors R a connected to ground and obviously, this is the same as R a by 2 and let me call this V x or something. I want to calculate V x by V i. What is it? I hey, must have solved number of problems of this type in the Laplace transform tutorial. What is the answer? There are many ways to express it, but uh, in the tutorial also you are given instruction. It is usually most convenient if you have polynomials of s in both the numerator and denominator. The way I like to write this is okay. This is correct. Any useful sanity checks you can use? I mean, how do I know that? Okay, I calculated something. I may have goofed the algebra. Is there some quick sanity check? S equals 0, you get 0. Why is that correct? Because the capacitor is an open circuit at DC, it blocks it. So, that is one of the things. And what is the value of the pole? The pole is a characteristic of the circuit. And if you set V i to 0, you simply have C and R a by 2. So, that is the time constant C times R a by 2 and the reciprocal of that is the pole that is what you get there. Okay? So, there are I mean in this case this is very simple circuit, but this is what you should do when you get any expression because who knows I mean a long chain of expressions you could have missed something. Okay? So, now if I plot the Bode plot of this. What do I get? What is the magnitude at low frequencies? At in the you know the slopes, right? Starts from uh, very low values, goes up at 20 dB per decade, and then becomes flat at the pole. Okay. The angle forty five where? So it starts from ninety, right? At very low frequencies it starts from ninety and then it goes to zero. Okay, so these are all like uh, details, but what is it that we wanted at this point? What should have been the contribution of V I? I mean, we came up with the circuit for a particular reason to get 12 plus V i. So, is there any frequency range where that happens? Huh? 
No, we, the reason we did the analysis was, okay, we had some intuitive idea that, hey, we can replace, a, we have to add 12 volts. So, we charge the capacitor to 12 volts and stick it in series with the input voltage. Now, that should give us 12 plus the input voltage, okay. The DC battery, that side, the 24 volt source, that will give you 12 volts eventually, right, because that we know, because that is a DC source. Now, is there any condition under which you get VI here? When is that? Huh? Obviously, well beyond the pole. Okay. So, the pole frequency is here and well beyond the pole, you get unit magnitude and zero phase. So, that means basically you get V i and that is obvious from this expression also. If the magnitude of S is much more than 1, this number itself becomes very close to 1. Okay. Is this fine? So, this arrangement actually will work. I mean, in spite of the hand waving way in which we got it. In fact, this is how we get most of the circuits by some intuition and combined with obviously some basic concepts. You cannot disrespect physical laws. You get some circuit and then you can verify and see that indeed it indeed works. So, the way to apply 12 plus V i is I won't draw the rest of the circuit. I'm assuming RB equals RA, so that the DC bias is 12 volts. Okay. So this does give you 12 plus VI as long as VI is a sinusoid whose omega is much greater than. You have a high pass filter here, C and R A parallel R B that gives you the corner frequency. So, as long as the frequency of the sinusoid is much more than the corner of the high pass filter, you will get almost V i there. Okay. So, this does not work under all circumstances. Obviously, it does not work for V i equals D C at all. If V i was also a DC voltage, what would happen? what will happen? Output will be 0. What really happens is, see the idea is this capacitor here should carry 12 volts. right? Now, that voltage will not be exactly 12 volts. There will be some contribution of V i as well. Okay? But if V i is D c, what happens is this will simply change to 12 minus V i and you will have 12 volts here. Okay? So, that is what will happen. You can easily see that. So, if it is D c, it will uh, the voltage across this will be also be at DC, which is equal to 12 minus V i. So, here you will only get 12 volts. So, it does not work, but for AC it works and actually there are a large number of useful circumstances where we do use AC. Right? There are many signals which naturally have a lower frequency limit. Audio for instance, it goes only from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Okay? So, this kind of circuit is used quite widely. So, this is basically to add DC voltage to an AC signal and this is known as an AC coupling circuit. Okay. So, that is it couples the AC value, but the DC values are different at the input and output. Okay. At input you had 0 DC, you had only V i, at the output side you have 12 volt DC, so you have 12 plus V i. Okay. So, now we also have to have a, a load resistor which is connected to ground and everything should operate properly. So, what do you think is the solution? I mean we worked all this through right. So, what is the voltage across this? Across R L? Everything I mean assume that the amplifier is operating correctly and so on. What will the, What is it? What is it? What is the circuit? Huh? V naught. What is that? It is basically V naught is K V K times V i. Okay? But I cannot connect R L like that. I have to connect it to ground. What is this voltage? The voltage here okay? with respect to ground. 
Across R L, we have k times V i. What is the voltage with respect to ground? Huh? 12 plus k V i, but I cannot connect R L like this. I have to connect it like that, but I still want only k V i across this. I do not want 12 volts, right? If I simply take this R L and connect it there, I get 12 plus k V i. That may not be acceptable. I just want k V i there. So, what is it that I need to do? Huh? 12 volt source, yeah. So, essentially I have to somehow subtract 12 volts. Again, I do not want to use, I cannot possibly use another battery there. So, what is the solution here? Capacitor, okay. Does this work? What will be the voltage across this capacitor if V i is 0? It will be 12, eventually it will reach 12 because with V i being 0, there is no signal component here, it will be at 12 volts and the capacitor will eventually reach 12 volts. And then when you apply V i, it will subtract that, there will still be some condition like we evaluated. You have to evaluate the transfer function from here to there and then see what it is, you can do that by yourself, okay. we can continue from there. So, that is also an AC coupling network. Okay. So, in the first case, we had no DC component across V i, it was an AC signal and to that we added it. In this case, we had D C plus A C and we want to subtract off the D C and again we use a capacitor. So, these capacitors which are known as coupling capacitors are used very frequently in circuits. Now, there is some, uh, there are some constraints obviously, this does not work when V i itself is D C, but there is a large number of applications where V i is not D C and this works perfectly well. Okay. Otherwise, you have to find some other ways. I mean usually there is no universal solution, you have to tailor the solution to the context that you have. Okay. So, please think about it, maybe you can evaluate the conditions under which the output side network works as you want. That is, the voltage across R L should be k times V i okay? and also do it one at a time, do not put the input coupling capacitor and the output, you just do one at a time and then see, that becomes easier because then you all you have is first order analysis which is quite simple. Okay?